We're now on the west part of this field, so we'll for sure finish it today. Arvid's going to dump next. I've not seen any hawk feathers, which is interesting, and also the only wildlife I've seen in the field, other than hawks and birds, is one antelope standing in the middle of this field. to go into the middle of these swaths and just drive down to where I left off at but I'll go on the opposite side of my row so that I don't run into dad who's combining and finishing his row right now. We swath the wheat or put it into windrows due to a bug we have called sawfly that burrows into the wheat and makes it fall over. If you're able to swath before the wheat starts falling over then you're doing a lot better because you can pick up all of your crop then. This crop is doing it was doing pretty good in the east side of this field, about maybe 20 bushels per acre, but my bushel per acre meter is saying maybe around nine in this half. It's interesting where more of the water stays, even in the same field. Just making my turn here. Stop, put it in turtle speed, put the back of the combine in, the front, press button number two to lower my header to the ground. Oh, and then rabbit speed for fast harvesting and then I'm good to go. The way a combine works is it brings the wheat into the machine and then it thrashes it. So basically what that means is it takes the whole wheat with the stem and the top of it, which is called the head, that has grain kernels in it and it goes like this and all of the grain kernels fall out of the chaff or what's surrounding them, the covering, and then the grain kernels come to the grain tank in the back and everything else gets chopped up and sent out the back. So that's basically a really simplified definition of how a combine works. The mission of the combine is to get the grain kernels. It looks like Arvid is just finishing up his dump. It's around 3.40, we usually have dinner at six, and we're getting pretty close to completing this field, which will be nice. So we will probably road the combines over to the new field today. If you watched my roading combines to 2022 harvest video you would know how far we had to drive to, to get them out to these fields. It's a good 15-20 minutes in a pickup truck going a decent speed so it takes a while in a combine going 20 miles per hour. My return auger is about halfway and I'm going 3.5, 3.6 but sometimes when I'm going around 3.2 miles an hour it's almost all the way. I still haven't seen hawk feathers but I've seen so many hawks. All of our combines were very, very full when we were dumping in Steve Wall. He maybe needs, I would say, two more combine dumps, at least one for sure. I probably drove a little fast to my row, but that makes life fun, so it's okay. As long as you don't drive too fast in the wheat and ruin your combine. Really crucial to pay very close attention and listen to your machine also. I know a lot of people have earbuds or different things when they drive combine, but I don't believe in that because I think if there's a major issue happening, you have to be able to hear it. Your combine will let you know if it's not doing well, if it's taking in too much weed at a time. Not as much as the 9610 though. When the 9610 was being overloaded with wheat to the point where it couldn't process it fast enough and it would plug up, you'd hear big grunting noises. These you won't, so you really have to watch your return auger and they'll plug up a lot easier than the 9610 will. But they still make noises and if something goes wrong, you'll hear a noise or many different things. I love my Kate's Egg shirt. It's so comfortable and it's just really neat to be able to wear a Kate's Egg shirt driving the combine. I love it and I can't believe that I was able to make this happen. So I feel very thankful for everyone who has supported me through this process. It's been truly incredible. Well, I finally see some hawk feathers, so I'm going to go out and grab them. I see hawk feathers, which is so awesome right over there. My dad said he saw a hawk in my wheat swap, so I might see some feathers, and he was right as I fall off the combine. Here they are. Oh no, Arvid had to stop because of me. Here all the hawk feathers are that I picked up. I hope you enjoyed my little excursion out of the combine. It was a very dusty one. Now I'm getting back in the combine and the hawk feathers go in the little pouch. So now, take parking brake off, engage my header, 
people RPM and move forward. Now officially finished all of the fields out east, so that's so exciting and a huge thank you to Arvid for roading down and taking the last half of my row so I didn't have to stay out in the field a little bit longer. That is really big plus to combine etiquette. Thank you Arvid for taking part of my row. Now I'm dumping in the truck and we're heading to a new field. Even if you're not full, you always dump in the truck after you finish the field. When you put it in the grain bins, that's how you ca calculate how many bushels you get per each field. So you want to make sure you're not transferring grain from one field to another field's truck load. Soon we'll be roading to a new field, which is exciting. Okay, did anybody ever tell you it should be smooth with things like that? No, never. Thanks for the tip, though. Now my Don't fold your auger like that around Wall Street. You've got bigger pipes, Dave. Yeah, you could catch them. Mark, are you guys about ready to move? That's my grandpa. We're ready to move right now. I'm on my way over there. I'll find you home. It's follow the leader in the combines. You don't go three next to each other. Yeah, we just finished. We're coming off the hill now. Might as well take everything over to Wilson's yard. And now we're moving combines. I want to know, I want to know if you're coming out the west side of that field. We are going out the west. Shorter. I know that. I am coming out that way. Before we pull off out of this field, okay, we're going to get so we're downwind with these combines and kick the header thing off. Yeah, I'll wait down here at the road, at the road for you. Okay, I know what you mean. Thank you. We're going to kick the wheat off of our header just in case this field's wheat's carrying any bad things we wouldn't want to move into the other field. Right here behind you. So we move our header all the way up, possible. Put it in turtle speed. I always put parking brake on because I don't want my combine to go for a joyride while I'm standing on the header. Do you have paper towels? Do you have paper towels? Now I'm back inside. I tried to see if there was a window light, but there wasn't. Now I'm taking park brake off, revving it up and going forward. Can I put it in third, Dad? That's what I normally rode in, Kate. And we're in third. I'm going to slowly move on to this road. It is a dirt road. I'm just getting a moisture sensor. I'm just getting a moisture sensor problem. There are crops on either side of me, so I don't want to drive in them. They're already bad yielding enough. This should be a good speed. It's about 16 miles an hour. I cleared off the front of my, oh, this might be too fast, the front of my header. Grandpa should be waiting for us at the end of this road. He's going to flag us. These are some sort of peas on the right side. They might be lentils or they might be chickpeas. I'm not totally sure. I'm not super familiar with pulse crops yet. We just recently started growing them. And then there's wheat to my left. What's this crop to the right of us? Chickpeas, I think. They're harvesting it actually right now. In order to harvest- Combine, combine cutting on that field costs over one million dollars. The combine cutting on this field, my grandpa just said, cost over $1 million. It's uh, probably a John Deere X9. I went over a rock there. Chickpeas require a special header, so not pick up. You don't swap them or anything like we're doing now. They require a flex header, which is basically a straight cutting header that will mold to the ground. We actually don't own those, so we always have our peas custom cut. Watch out for that badger hole on the right. That's kind of a big bump. Yeah, I think that's the bump I just went through. <laughs> Thank you, though. This is pretty fast, 21 miles per hour. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit more about how your food gets to your table. Make sure to like and subscribe. You can also visit the Kate's Egg website, katesag.com, and purchase a made and grown in the USA Kate's Egg t-shirt. 
with either left chest or left sleeve arm logo or a Kate's Egg tote bag. You can also follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G and on Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.